to appear. Um, well, let me come in now. This um, selector. Because we're going to get to that. Cool. So just looking back at this, we have on the component mount, we get a random dog picture and we display that. Uh, we also get all the dog breeds from the API. We save it to the state, to this breeze array. Then we grab this breeze array and we map over it. Or in this case, uh, we do the for each on it, creating an option element, an option tag for each, for each breed. And we push that to our breed options. Um, and then this ends up being an array of option tags, basically. If you give an array of option tags to React in the render, it just knows how to render it. Um, as long as it's an array of React elements, which is basically what this function returns. And because we have in our return, we basically have inside of the select, we have this dot populate select and we invoke the function because we want this function to do its job, which is looping over and creating the select options, uh, return the array and the array sort of gets plugged in here. If we want a, an empty option, uh, we could have something like, one here option value and be empty uh, and do select a breed and in this fashion then we have sort of like the select breed um, or an empty sometimes you will see it like that or just em totally empty um, and then the, they will, the user will just pick one of those cool so, oh, I just wanted to show that this is how we did it here with this for each loop. Um, and I was saying that um, a map will probably be more concise, even though this, this works. And I want to show you here how basically this code that we wrote here, well, not exactly this code we can write in this curly brackets, right? We have. We have these curly brackets here, which in here we can write JavaScript in the curly brackets. But we can't, we have some limitations. For instance, we cannot do if statements, we can't do switch statements, um, we can't do like uh, declaring a variable. We can't say let, let a equal a. We can't do this. Um, here, what we need to do is have a JavaScript expression. We can't have a JavaScript program. We can have a JavaScript expression uh, that evaluates to a single value. Um, and if we think about it, like this is this is a JavaScript expression. This is uh, the invocation of that function, which returns uh, just a single value, which will be the array of options. Uh, so we can't do like the variable stuff here. But this piece of code, we can. Um, or another way in which we could have done this is with a map, we could do this. We could say, um, bless you. We could do, we have the breeds here from the state in our render. Um, so in here I could do breeds that map. For each breed, I want to create, um, we want to return an option. So we could do this. return option return option and here we can just say breed and let's say we also want the value to be no this is so a lot of pop-ups here so we could do this uh, which is we're just mapping over the breeds array and 
we are mapping this array of breeds that are just strings to an array of options. And this should give us the exact same result. If I go to a browser, oh, we got this. <laughs> we got basically the same thing. Uh, what part? Here? This one, we need this to be in curly bra braces or brackets. Um, because this here, we want it to be evaluated by JavaScript to tell us what it is. And we get the exact same behavior. Um, and these two, this method and Hupo's method are doing the same thing, which is looping, creating an array of options, and returning that array of options. That's what map does. Map turns an array of something into an array of something else with, this, with, the, with all the elements. Right. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this one here. Uh, uh, of map in render. This function can be invoked. Um, there's also maybe call here that populate slide box. Right, so we could call the function or we could just do it here, straight here. Um, some of you may be thinking, when should I do the function? When should I do it like straight in here? I tend to, when this is a small thing, when it's like a small chunk of JavaScript, I'll put it in the curly brackets directly, like in this case. But if it's a larger function that maybe is like building a more complex uh, div with some stuff nested, I'll put it in a function like populate select um, and just return it here and just call that function. Um, cool. Um, so any questions so far about this code? Um, I, well, you still have the link. You could see, you could see it for yourself as well in VS Code. But any any questions? Cool. Um, so from here, what we want to do is let's do like the first simplest uh, step, which is let's get this. Have a, have a function, let's take five minutes to do that, have a function that is going to be called whenever the user selects an option. And console log the user, in that function, console log the option that the user selected. So let's take five minutes to have a function that gets called when the user selects something and console log what the user selected.
Cool. So maybe Cameron, could you walk us through how you did, um, how you managed to put the, how did console up first the value when the option is changed, uh, as well as what do we want to do with that value by setting the state? Oh, I want to basically work with select to mm -hmm. update it when it changes, so I use the on change and value. Okay. So, let me see. Which are you are you connected? Okay. So while you do that, I'm gonna do the on change that you said in the select. So in the select here, 
we will have an unchange. And we probably have a function. What do you call the function? Okay, I, you, I see your join. Um, now maybe just like here, the on change. I see. Uh, I don't remember exactly. We could we could look at it. Um, let's see. Is there an on select? There seems to be an on select. Let's see. Um, select select on change disable. Wait, let's. On select disable. And this one doesn't seem to be. I think I'm just clarifying this on, on the chain here. It's Let's maybe go to the official documentation. Maybe the Here, we should be able to find it. DOM events, select, yeah, there is a select event on select my function, execute JavaScript when some text has been selected. So this is the key. Select is when you're highlighting text rather than picking an option. Mm -hmm. Yep, so going back to cameras, so you have the unchanged, the select new breed. Right. Um, so yep. The first thing I want to do is kind of just like have something in the state that's going to keep hold of the, the breed. Okay. So Got it. So, so if we go to the state, I guess. Actually, let me see if I can. Is this uh, you now? This is this is you. Yeah. And then from there, when something comes up, it's already Okay. Let me see. Let me see if I can follow you so that you could share, so that you could like oh, highlight and I share. Yep, now like. Uh huh. Oh, a little bit louder. So I'm using the event to target whatever the, the value of whatever's in the select box at the time. Got it. And I'm going to make that into a variable that I'm going to use to update the state. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, I'm going to um, you know, we use it as a new variable, new read. Okay. The state was that, and it syncs that um, set state. And I can also log in here too. I can get the same progress. But I want to see in the state that. Uh-huh. And Great. Cool. Um, and as I said it like at the beginning, this is a very common React pattern where you have something that you want to listen uh, for changes or events on. Um, you have a state where you're going to keep the result of that event on um, and you will make want to make sure that you also set the value specifically uh, in the way that we have here. So whenever you have like an input, like a form input, you're basically going to have on change an event listener for sure and setting the value explicitly like in this case. Um, I hope I hope some of you are tired of me repeating that at some point. Um, cool. Then once we have this, um, 
Yep. Once once we have this, we're setting the state, and what what are some of the reasons why we would want to keep this on state? Yep. Yeah, this is if we don't skip, we want this um, because if we skip this basically, so sort of, uh, if we skip this, I think it will let us. Oh, wait, select new breed is not defined. Oh, this is we have to do this, that. That's fine. Um, so this goes back to let me do uh, explanation on this. This goes back to the fact that, and I, I hope some of you have read the React documentation or at least are in the process of reading it. Um, but there is this uh, select here without setting the value, only sending uh, setting the event listener is what in React is known as an uncontrolled component. And uncontrolled components are very easy to get off sync with what the user is seeing. Um, in this case, uh, it's a little bit hard, but we saw the example with the clear button uh, on the form, uh, like last week. But the this was all coming from, in React, you want to have control component, which is you set the state, uh, you have an event listener, and you set the value explicitly. And that is because, so you have like, you have your state somewhere, and you have your, your select box, right? And what you're doing is you're reading from this select box and setting the state, like selecting an option, and you set, you set the state and that's cool. Uh, but here we have, we end up having the information in two places, the information the option that was selected now it lives in state. So if I select a new grid, the state is updated. But it also exists in uh, the select box. The select box manages its own internal state. Um, and we want this to always be in sync. We want, um, yeah, so I guess like the example here is imagine we have a reset button. And when you click that reset button, we want the select option to go back to blank, right? If, if we only have the event listener, that's not possible. Uh, because we can have a reset button, and that will uh, reset the state. In fact, let's just let's do that as, because I want this point to be uh, more stressed. So I'm gonna have a button here um, called reset, and on click, this that reset form, let's say, and let's have a function here, reset form, let's do reset select event, uh, this dot set state, uh, and then we call it selected breeding the state. So selected breed, let's set it to an empty string. So the behavior that I will want is, uh, let's put this, oops, wait, I'm still following. Um, I want to put the reset under the other one. So the behavior that I want here is I click a breed uh, and then I click reset and I want this to go back to blank, right? But my state, so now I got, a, I got my state got out of sync with the UI because on the state, the state now is blank. If we go to, if we go to the developer tools here on components, we can see that, uh, Wait, let's see, hit, res hit reset. Okay, so now we haven't got out of sync just yet because my, my, my reset button is not working. Um, 
Is, oh, yeah, yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Reset select. This is what I called it. So here we start with an empty string. We select something. The state is updated. We see the new thing. Um, now hit reset. And the selected breed is empty string. But my select box is still with that value. Right, and this is what I'm saying about like this is just one scenario where uh, your, your state can be out of sync with your UI, and the whole point for state is to um, to represent the uh, state in which the user uh, interface is in. Right, that's the whole point for like state in React. And if we remember that React is a framework for building UI applications, uh, a state is that mechanism that will um, that represents what's literally the state of your application. Is there a drawer open? Is the a button selected, uh, etc. So for this case here, going back to the Hugo's question, that's why we set the value of the select box because we are listening for the changes in the select uh, that affects the state. But if some other thing is affecting the state and is affecting the same part of state like the select, in this case the select of breed, we want the select box to update with whatever changes happen to its part of state. And in that case, then, uh, I'd like to represent that with this sort of um, circle, where this here is the event listener, the event listener, this sort of arrow coming from, the, this is how we sort of get data from the select into our state. And to get data from our state into the select, we just use the value attribute, basically. Uh, and in this way, we're always in sync. Um, where, yeah. So there is, I think there's an article, if you, if you Google control components react, um, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, like first you want to make sure that you read this article on forms um, Because it goes much more in depth um, About how to handle forms and why you want control components mm -hmm. Cool that was a good question. So In this case if we set the value let's leave the, the Let's just leave the reset button just to have it Value, we want the value to be as Cameron said, um, selected breed. And then now we can see that now the reset button just works. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Cool, let's get this here, this here. So we want that in state. Um, oh, that was my question. Why do we? Why would we want to have this in state? Beautiful. Yeah, basically, because later on we want to use it to make a network request. This is another like this is a piece of information that we see that it changes over time, right? The user can have Beagle first. And then maybe um, another breed, like German Shepherd or whatever other breed. So we can see that it meets the condition. Not only we need it, but it also meets the condition that it's going to change over time. And it changes uh, how our UI looks. Right? It's literally changing from Corgi. You know, now our UI is show, showing Corgi. Um, from Corgi to Bulldog. It's changing our UI. And all the stuff that you want to keep in state, like whenever you think, whenever you're thinking about saving something to state, you want to ask yourself, um, why? Like, do I need this later on? But also, is it going to change over time? And is change is it changing the way my UI looks um, or behaves? Even behaves well. So, 
the, that kind of information is the one that you want to put on stage. Um, so sort of like going going off of that, let's do one move here, um, which is sort of small, but let's look at this. So for instance, our get dog breeds, our get dog breeds is getting a list of breeds from the API and it sets uh, the breeds uh, state. Um, it says that breed state to be all breeds, but breeds, our list of breeds never changes after the first time. So it doesn't change, basically it's only affect the way in which your UI looks once. Um, and, oh, well, now, now I'm realizing. So I was, think, I was thinking then, maybe we don't need to set this in the state, but Joey, I was wrong. We need the breeds to be on state. So I was, I was thinking we may not need the array of breeds to be in state because it only changes once and the user has no way to like make it change again. Um, so this is, since it's something that um, is not changing over time, um, then we won't need it in state. So I was thinking about this. Let me comment this out or actually, let me comment. Oops. Let me comment. Um, this here, comment this in. So I was thinking what we could do is not set it to state, just set it directly on the class itself like this. But this has a problem. Uh, so I say that and then my select box is never populated. Well, one, because this is still the populate select is still coming from like reads from the state. So maybe let's get rid of like this one const. It'll be something more like uh, let's leave that one. And in here, let's do this that reads. But this is still cannot read property map of undefined. Um, here we have this this that breeds is undefined at the beginning. So if we want to sort of get around that, we'll need to start here another property this that breeds. And we're gonna have to go back to the state. So don't worry if uh, if this is going over. Um, it is, it is working. Um, oh, it's working, but for a very obscure reason, which is, um, the render is happening two times or actually render happen is, it will happen. Well, at this point it's happening two times because the first one, when the component is just made, that's the first render. The second render is we have a component in mount that is gonna get a random dog picture and set the state. That sets the state, render gets called again. Um, and because render gets called again, then I think there is a chance that sometimes we might see the select box and sometimes we won't. Um, we actually get it on all of them, um, but that is, Let's get rid of this one, for instance. Let's get rid of the, just so to demonstrate, let's get rid of get dot picture. Now it doesn't work. <laughs> so that was quite some hoops. So let's go back here. Uh, the get dot breeds. So I was thinking we don't need the breeds in the state because they are not going to change over time. Um, we only need to get them once and display them once, right? So I was saying, I was saying, I was thinking, um, we don't need to set it in the state. We just call it in the class itself. Uh, but here, then we get that problem that because we're not setting it to the state, we never get a render. We never get a re-render. Um, 
and then render never catches the array of new breeds basically. Um, so even in this in, even in this scenario, um, we do need to keep the breeds in the state. And I guess like where my reasoning was flawed was in the changing over time, right? Because the the breeds, the array of breeds that we need to get from the API will change. It doesn't come immediately, right? It will take some time to, to get that uh, because it's a network request. And that already is, is changing over time, right? It's not constant. It's not something that we have from the get-go. So at some point we have it, uh, at some point we don't have it, and at a later point in time we do have it. Um, which is then why we'll need it in the in the state and not just as I was imagining. So here, let's just put it back on the state. I think I saw saw a hand up in the back. Let's, let's get this back working. State. And let's also give it component get, get dot grids. We get an error. That's a dog array. This that set state breeds. Um, oh, Brianna, I think we might be getting the same error that you were getting earlier. Oh, yeah, it is. No, you were not seeing it in the state. I wasn't, but I didn't. Um, so that's that there. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I know why. This, this now goes back to braids because it's coming from the stage. So, and we can see then that we got our breeds back. Um, in fact, if we, if we slow down the network, uh, I'm going to slow down the network here so that we can see it. Uh, let's do fast 3G. And refresh, we will see that at the beginning we have this. Um, actually, even it ha happens too fast. Slow it a little bit now. More. So, the breeds, what well, I guess what I'm trying to say is the breeds is something that we need to keep in state uh, because it will change over time, even if it only changes once. Um, it's something that we start, we don't start with. Um, we go to the network uh, to get that from the API, and then it arrives. Once it arrives, we need to re-render because we have new information that we want to display to the user, right? And we can see here as I refresh this page that at the beginning of time, we have the select box being empty, has no options. After the network request succeeds, like right here, no options. After it succeeds, then we get the options. When you see that the select is ex expanded, that's because the, the second render happened, which is once we got the results from the network request. Um, and therefore, we do need it in our, in our stage. So let me comment out. Let me uncomment to get the first picture, which is uh, component did mount get dot picture. And here we end up having two things that happen as soon as the component mounts, which is we get a random dot, dot picture and we get the uh, select box. You can see that like here it happens so fast. Oh, actually, it happens, I think it's because. Yeah. See, when I, have, when I have the developer tools open, really quickly you can see 
the select being unpopulated and then this a second later populated by like uh, really quick. When I have it, when I don't have my developer tools open, I don't even see that shaking. Um, this is the purpose of, um, or this is happening for because of caching basically. That network request is being cached, so our app is not really making the network request. The browser is seeing that you're making the network request to the same thing that you just did five minutes ago, and it says, oh, I have the data here. Um, and that, that's why we don't have that showing up there. Cool, so okay, any final questions before we move on to having this um, actually get us a new dog that is of the beagle breed? Yes, Joy. Mm. Yes, you can have the component amount be an asynchronous function itself. Yeah, if you want to like control like the order in which operations happen, yeah. Um, you just want to be careful with that in general. Like, you want to use async await to control uh, the order in which network requests happen only if those network requests are interdependent. Meaning like the second cannot happen without the first one. In this case, for instance, they are independent. We get first a random dog, and then we get um, and we get all the dog breeds. They have no, but there's no reason to wait one for the other, uh, or vice versa, right? And in this case, the browser will actually fire these two at the same time in parallel. The browser sees those two and it fires them both in parallel. Um, and that is just really nice to have instead of having to wait for one to come. Um, cool, so we have the select. Uh, we are setting it to state if we inspect the state here on our components. Um, oops, let's go back, components, not profile, components. That com this profiler thing should be able, should be cool to learn. I have, haven't checked it out, but that seems to be something to improve the performance of our React apps. Maybe identifying uh, extra re-renders that we may not need, um, but I haven't checked it out. Let me know if you if you investigate sort further. Cool, so we have this select box. When I click on something, it's changing in our state, the selected breed. Uh, what do we want to do from here, basically? <coughs> Well, like the uh, ternary ternary operator. Uh huh. Ah, oh. let's see. What you're saying is uh, query parameters yeah. to see how we can make a network request to get a dog by a specific breed. Yes, that's correct. That's that's not far fetched. Um, this API, I think, doesn't use query parameters, but if we go here to the documentation, um, we can say random image by breed, and then we can see here this example, for instance. We could get API slash breed slash the selected breed hound, in this case, images, and we get all the hound images. Or we could even do random image from a breed collection. So it seems that if we do this, we get all the pictures by this breed, but we're not interested in all of them. We're just interested in one random. Uh, so we can do here, random image from breed collection slash with slash random, we get a random, in this case, hound. Is it, are all these hounds? No, they're not hound. Or maybe they are, they're just different uh, different kinds. Let's try like, oh, I can't change this. But anyway, this is basically the URL that we now need to use. We need to plug in here where it says hound, which is the breed. We need to plug in here 
whatever the user selected. Um, and that's it, basically. Um, so let's try this. So we have this URL. Now, where would we want to do this? And in general, how do we accomplish it? Maybe somebody can give uh, an overview of what we're about to do. We have the URL. What do we do with it? Um, at what point in time, for instance? Peter? Um, you want to add the selected read into the picture function. OK. Got it. So I think I, I, like, I like that idea. So Peter is suggesting we should accommodate this function to basically be able to get a photo for a random dog as well as a photo for a random dog by a specific breed. And I, I like that idea. Let's compare these two URLs. Uh, let's see how they're different. Let's see if we can definitely make it work. Okay. Um, so the only difference is that uh, for getting a random image for a random like breed, we have we just have slash breed slash image, um, and for getting by a specific breed, we have to do this in the middle basically. I see. So how could we approach this? Yep, camera. So what you're suggesting is maybe just use the read from state here. Like here. Something like that. Then maybe let's bring it here. Uh, not console log. Um, const selected read is that state yeah maybe here you just do selected read and something like that yeah. that's a, that's a first good idea the problem with this will be that you will now are getting a random a random image when we don't have a breed selected may be broken, so let's check it out. Um, bring it back here, react. We see, so now, like, we broke our initial one. Um, Peter. Okay, yeah, I think that that's also a, a valid option. We could just have a selected breed by default and just get that one um, and I feel like yeah these are I don't I don't think that is a very plausible option um, but let's say we want it when it's blank we want it to be any dog of any breed yeah mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, that's correct. That's, I think that's the best approach. So what Malik says is he knows that selected breed, uh, an empty string, which is when we don't have anything, is a falsy value. So we could just check if, it, if selected breed is falsy, then let's use this URL. Uh, if selected breed is truthy, which is we have one of the, select, uh, one of the breeds selected, let's do this other URL basically. Um, and there are multiple ways in which you can do this. Um, let's do let's do the if statement so, because I think it's the most straightforward. And then you could um, you could even do it with a ternary later on. So let's say literally what Malik said here, like if select a breed <coughs> when then we want to do so. Let's do this here. Take this here. Let's start with no URL and if we have a selected breed what we want to do is 
uh, we want the URL to be now this one. Oh, I guess like otherwise we want the URL to be uh, just this. Just this. Let me get rid of this comment here. Uh, so this is, I think, a neat way. Let's see if it works. Cool. We got it working. Um, as I don't have anything selected, see this, this still doesn't work, but we got back that whenever the, it loads, we get a random um, picture. And that is thanks to this if statement. If the selected bit is, bit is truthy, we want to do that. Um, questions about this? This could be also done, yeah, this could be like this if statement could be abstracted in one line, like something like this. Um, let dog API URL equal this. Yeah. If, if there is a selected breed, we want to do is plug in the selected breed plus plus a slash. Here. No, because this slash is already this one. As it depends, but I think it will be. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. So select the breed, then just slash plus. Yeah, breeds, breeds, and then slash the breed, and then lastly will be just image random, basically. Image random. So in, in here. Uh huh. It's no S. It's no S? Yeah. Oh. Wait, no, here? Here? This. So I have something that says breeds. Line 28 here. Oh, so this changes from plural to singular too? Yeah. Oh. So this one is breed, and the original was breed. I see. Okay, then uh, then that's kind of big. Uh, then that's getting too complicated in this ternary. Um, I think you get the idea with the ternary. I'll say uh, do it with the ternary if you feel comfortable. Otherwise, you could just go with the if statement. Um, yeah, so this is basically this. If we have a selected breed, we could also just do this sort of like, we know that this is our default basically. So let's just do this one here. Oops. Oh, this is not the URL that I copied. We know that this is our, this one is image. This is our default, so we could just get rid of the else. Um, and if we have a selected breed, we just overwrite that default 
um, to be the one, the URL that is taking in this selected brief. Let's just see what we have, see if it still works. Cool. Okay, questions, comments on this part. Great idea of reusing this function because this function is already making the network request. Um, and we know that we have a URL, we just need one. So this was a good reuse case. Now let's see, I guess, should this work just by default also? If we click on new, oh, it works. Uh, well, let's see, let's pick a, let's pick a breed, let's hit new dog. Oops, something is breaking. So I click on a breed and then I click on new dog and stuff just breaks. Uh, what line? 28. Line 28 here. Oh, it's last random, yeah. Thanks, because this is going to get all of them. Uh, if you only leave it at images, you're getting all the images for that breed. Random, you get a single one. Uh, let's try now. So fresh. Let's get a bulldog or a boxer. New dog. New dog. Cool. We, just, we see that we were able to add that functionality basically with just this if statement by reusing the function, the get dog picture function. Cool. Uh, the next thing will be just we wanted to also get it once it changes. Um, where would I put that? On Corgi? Whenever I ch it changed from Corgi to Husky, I want it to change. I want to get a new picture. So one line of code, yeah. In the own change. So if we go to the own change. Um, this component is getting big. Uh, we have it, we call it handle. Oh, I actually, yeah, this, this name I wanted to change. Um, we have a select. The unchange event listener is this that select new breed. I'll change this variable function uh, or this name to be something like handle handle select or handle um, breed change. Those are those are good names. I was gonna call it handle breed change. Uh, handle breed change. And as Hubel said, well, you could just call this function there. Uh, let's go on handle breed change. Call it here. Get uh, this dot get dot picture. We have new dog. Random. As I pick on one, let's do bulldog immediately changes. Is this a bulldog? It's not a bulldog. <laughs> Let's go back to another one and go, oh, this is good, this is good, this is cool. We have, we have this issue, which is we are one step behind. Uh, this is, I was exp waiting for this moment so that we could get uh, to the Y and it's sort of obscure, but you see how I have bulldog here? But I got, I got the previous breed dog. If I change to something else, now I'm gonna get a bulldog. Is this a bulldog? <laughs> <laughs> let's go like with him. Let's go, let's go with Husky. Wait now. <laughs> let, me, let me just refresh. Uh, it might be that we're always random. Also, we should apply some CSS. These images have to be. Um, let's go with Beagle. This is definitely, I don't know if this is a. <laughs> 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 well, this is not a Beagle. 
Uh, let's go now to Boxer and let's see if we get a Beagle. We got a Beagle now. Now let's go to Husky and see if we got a Boxer. We got a Boxer. So, and so here you're probably going to see this like in this context and others. Um, and this is, this is happening basically because we are setting the state and reading from the state um, on like very fast between like reading and setting and setting and reading. And let's look at, I want to find the official documentation. Um, reading or set state asynchronous or something like that. Yes, this, I'm going to share this link out um, right now. Uh, we have it fresh here. But this basically says set state may be asynchronous. Um, so React uses some, some optimizations that if it sees that you're doing set state really close to each other, uh, we'll just probably like uh, package all the set state into one operation. Um, and then we have to just be aware of that because we get these kind of issues. Um, right, and you get these kind of issues when you're doing something like this. This is what I was, this is what I was saying about um, sort of reading from the state and setting the state uh, in sort of the same, at the same time. Here, this is what we have. We have this that set state, and this person is destructuring the previous state like this. Um, and here is like, React is, I don't know which, or in here, it just gets confused about how this should happen because it's modifying, it's gonna try to modify something with the previous value. But it gets into sort of this uh, weird uh, loop that is like one behind. Um, so we want to avoid this uh, as much as possible. Basically, setting the state while at the same time reading from the state. Here, this is what we call reading from the state or accessing the state at the same time we're setting the state. Even if you do this like in a variable on top of this that set state, that's still reading from the state um, at the same time that you're setting it. Um, and we just hadn't had like an example. We were doing something like this. Um, and in this case, it's a little bit um, more, yeah, I guess that we don't have an example here where where we were like doing this that um, let's say breeds or actually like the counter example. You guys remember the counter example? Um, even I think I might be able to pull it up here on code sandbox. Um, Maybe this one. Oh, this is the green. Drops on products. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't find it. Um, but we, when we had the counter, we had like um, a function called handle click that when you click the button, it will increase a number to one. And we had like our, that function, our, our handle click function was a function that will access the state, will get the previous count, um, and it will, then after it gets the previous count, you just do set state uh, counter, counter plus one, right? So it was something like this. Let's do let's write it here. Thinking thinking back of that. Uh, let's do handle, I think we call it like handle plus, something like that. Yeah, assuming, you know, sort of remembering back um, that we were having the counter, and we had something like this. Const counter from the state. And we're doing this that set state. And we have counter equal to counter 
plus one. Right? We had something like this for like adding one to that counter. And in this case, um, we're not doing this that set state directly here, but we're st it's still the same thing. Like this is no different from doing this. This dot state dot dot counter plus one. This is the same thing. We are accessing we're accessing the state at the same time we are setting the state, and we just have to be careful when we're doing that. Um, and this is exactly the same thing that's going on right now. Um, where we're accessing the state um, too soon after we have set it or the opposite. We're setting the state too soon after we have uh, accessed it. And let's look at that here. So we end up with this like one loop behind. Oh, I mean, this was what you were telling me earlier, right? Cool. Um, so how do we fix that? The way is, let's first see how we're accessing the state and setting the state almost at the same time, or just really uh, close. If we look at the, this is the handle change. So here, we have this handle bridge change. Right, yeah, so this is, this is a good example. We have the handle bridge change here. When I select on something, let's select boxer. Um, when I select something, the state is being set. So the first, the first thing that was set was change to boxer. Right after that, really quickly, we get this dot get dot picture. We call the function this dot get dot picture. This function will go to the API and will get a picture. Now this this doc, get doc picture is accessing the state. Um, wait, where is it? Here. The get doc picture function is accessing the state here, and it's checking if it's if it's, if this is a truthy or a falsy to pick which URL to use. Now what happens is that is all happening too fast. And the, the selected breed has not been finalized, like set in the state when we call the function get dog picture. So what happens here is like, again, I think this is all, somewhere in the documentation, this, this article probably goes more in depth. Um, but in here, React sees the first set state uh, where is the first set state? On the handle we change here. It sets this state. And you'll say you'll think, well, this will come after this, then comes this. Right? But then we have to be aware that this might not be synchronous. This might be asynchronous. What happens is this executes, this goes to execute, and then we execute this. But when we execute this, the bridge has not been set in the state. The breed that we selected, the breed that we would expect this to have set, has not been set. And when this function accesses the state, is accessing, and you see that the selected breed is still the empty string. And in that case, then we get this weird error, which is one behind. So when I select this, when I select by I don't know what that what that is. Um, Husky, here, this we got a previous, the dog with the previous uh, breed. And if we go back sort of like at here, here, I guess like it's easier to illustrate on the first one. So this is a random dog with no specific breed. Now I select, select a boxer. The boxer is gonna be set to the state, but the set, the state, you can think of it, the state hasn't been finished setting and we are getting a new dog picture. Here, when I click this, the state has not been finished setting, and we're getting a new doc picture with the get doc picture function. Now, when we call this function, it turns out that the state has the state for the breed has not been set just yet. You get the empty string, um, and we get this problem, which is we are in this case we're 
this is how the one behind starts. Uh, right now, the state was set to boxer. Um, and then the same thing happens again when I click on Bulldog. The state has not been finished setting. Um, wait, this one, did this one work? This one worked. Oh, this is a boxer, this is a boxer, yeah. Um, they're, they're similar. Um, then this, the state has not been finished setting, uh, but the function to get the dog uh, picture gets fired. It reads the previous, like the old state, uh, if you will, and we get this kind of behavior. And it is, this is kind of, it's weird to get, um, but I know that you know we'll we'll be dealing with it as as we forget that we can't access the state at the same time we're setting it or we just have to be careful. Yes, sir. You. Also, the reason I'm not having that problem because like I'm having everything happening in like I have an app. In one function. Like I have an app JS and then I have a dog loader component. Uh huh. Uh, I'm passing. I'm passing as a function called handle select with okay. from the dot selector to the app and then to the app to the dot loader and it works. Okay. And yeah, I guess it will be, it will have to look at the components you have. Uh, but you basically have multiple components. Right now I'm doing this on app. Um, oh and the idea is that we're gonna break it down uh, from here Maybe in a little bit. Yeah, we could. It will be interesting to, to reason about that. Yeah, somebody has the content highlighted. That's Bonil. Yeah, that's right. Mine just keep breaking. Okay. Um, yes, come on. Um, no, I think it's it's just weird um, that it might happen sometimes, but it is happening because of what I was describing about. By setting the state, that uh, setting the state may be asynchronous, and that's something that React decides internally. Um, so I can't really like say why it would sometimes work and sometimes don't, and why maybe it's always working on yours. Um, just yeah, like you want to get you want to read this article um, that I just share, and. Yeah, just like read a, bit, a few of this to develop a little bit more of a feeling for it. Yeah. <coughs> this might be like a little off topic, but like sometimes yeah. when I have YouTube, I type in like a new like video, it'll fucking it'll go, I'm sure like a video from the old video, even though I put a new one. Mm. Same thing exists, like it's not updated. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, I, only if YouTube is using React, which I actually I don't think they are. No, uh, they use, I know that you, uh, they, Google uses Angular, so this is probably Angular. Um, yeah, so I, I wouldn't be able to tell. Um, oh, really? So would you show, like, it shows you the a new thumbnail of the new song. Uh huh. I see. Well, yeah, like we can't really tell what the source is of that, but we we do what we do know is that at some point their UI, the way that their app looks, got out of sync with what they have internally stored about like their state, basically. I know that I don't know how it works in Angular, but all these frameworks do have sort of a sense of uh, state of where the how the UI should look, basically, which is the state. Um. Cool. Um, so we got this to work. Let's say, I think the next level was just getting this uh, a little bit more, just like getting 10 pictures instead of one. Let me look back at the lecture. Yeah, um, 
Yeah, it's just like getting 10 pictures instead of one. Uh, hmm. I feel like So I feel like we're, we're not going to get to do this, um, the, maybe we could do it tomorrow, uh, showing like the 10 pictures. I'll encourage you to try to get it to work like on your own. Um, what I wanted to do with this is sort of start breaking this down because this app, now our app.js is quite big now, it's um, 124 lines. Um, and we were, I was just thinking that it would be better to so get it back to work, but now in a more modular way. Um, I also do recognize that this, when you have a list, it makes a little bit more sense to have a modular. Um, I think the original thing that we had was, uh, we'll have the main component like that. And And then we had, we have something that we call like the um, dog selector, I think. Or I'll call it breed, breed selector. And then we had, I think it was, I forgot the name of the other component. <coughs> Dog, dog styles, uh, dog breed selector, uh, index, the dog's container, basically. Yeah. So, hmm. Dog container, so, hmm. So let's do in this instead of doing this doc container, we can do the doc container tomorrow. Uh, but for now, let's just have um, let's have something like dog dog display. And then tomorrow we can get the dog display to show instead of for now like dog display, which now here we call dog container. Doc container here in the example that we have, we was going to have uh, a list of dogs instead of one. For for right now, let's just have the dog display just show one dog. Um, but let's do separate from app our breed selector, basically sort of like our form, just to practice and see more of of uh, the props. So what we want to do is sort of have this structure. Um, App, which is our main file, is going to hold the state. Uh, the bread selector is going to hold our uh, buttons and our. We're going to have our buttons and the select box. And the dog display is just going to be in charge of displaying, in this case, just one photo of one dog. But just sort of we get practice on like breaking this stuff down and also just uh, rewiring our app through props. Um, which in this case we're not using, we're writing everything in one component. Um, so the first thing that we will do here is I'm going to create a components folder here on my source folder, components, and I'm going to say I'm going to create two files, one called breed selector. JSX. And another one called dog display. JSX. Cool. And then in breed selector, um, in breed selector, we're gonna put basically our select box, our form. So let's do. Let's start with a function for now.
um, and let's export this and import React. Import React from React. from React and then let's do basically the same thing for the other one I'm just gonna copy this dog display and change the name oops uh. dog display So basically what we have is, we have broken down our app into two parts. Well, we have the buttons at the top, let me just redraw it. We're gonna have our selector that has a select box and two buttons. And we have our dog display is just going to be Um, basically, a component that, in this case, for just for now, is going to have is just going to show the image that we select, basically. So this is going to be our um, breed selector, and this is going to be our dog display. Those are the two components that we're about to create. Um, so once we have sort of this breed selector, what I'm just going to take is I'm going to take all the select box from here and the buttons. I'm going to move it from here, uh, command X to cut and paste it in here in the return uh, like that. Uh, we Remember that we'll need to wrap all this into one element. I'm going to use a React fragment here, abbreviated by this, um, by the angle brackets. Um, you could remember, you could just also use a div. So I'll select there, and then what I want to do here, let me put this back. Here I'm just going to call my breed selector. I'm going to call it here, and make sure that I import it at, it, at the top. Um, and um, I'm importing it with this. Import breed selector from components breed selector. So I just took all my uh, markup, basically, the select elements, the form, um, to, well, it, we don't have a form, but the elements that are form elements, I took them to its own component, breed selector, uh, and then I, instead of having that in my re render for app, I just call it, I just invoke that component with breed selector. And visually, our app should have not changed. Uh, maybe we get an error. Yeah, we get an error saying selector breed is not defined, breeds is not defined. Um, what this is saying is it doesn't know where this is going to come from. The handle breed change that we had in our app, um, and it doesn't know where breeds is, uh, etc. It doesn't know what get doc picture is, reset select is. So, how are we going to get this to work? One keyword. Peter. Props. That is um, the keyword. So, in here, we're just going to pass this um, from props or through props. So, let's do props here on this function. Um, then, let's do the select. This, this function is going to come not from the this, but from props, props here, then breeds is going to come from props, so actually in fact, since all this stuff is coming from props, let's just do it here, uh, handle breed change, uh, breeds is going to come from here, 
and I think also the selected value later on. This dot prop, uh, not this, just props. We can do that here. Handle breed change, breeds. Um, what is the other thing? This get dot picture, reset select, as well as the value selected breed. So let's do it here. All that stuff that was now coming from app will come through props, selected breed, um, get dot pictures, and reset select. All of this stuff is gonna come through props. Now I get rid of this here. Um, and we basically have this. We're just bringing all this stuff from props. Let's see if now visually we have the same stuff. Cannot read property map of undefined. Any uh, suggestions why we, we might be getting this error? Map of undefined on the breed selector. Yep. We have this it through the properties of breed selector and then Correct. So we don't. We're not passing it. Um, we're not passing a, a breeds to our component. It's undefined. Uh, then the properly uh, thrown error map of undefined. We can't access map of undefined. So this is why I like to say that passing props is a two-step process. One is receiving, utilizing the props, and the second is passing the props. So here we are sort of expecting these props. Um, and our JavaScript is expecting them as well, and that when reality doesn't match expectations, um, you get unhappiness. That is not true to throughout. So if we go app uh, in breed selector here. We'll need to pass in the stuff that breed selector is expecting, which is the breeds. That comes from the state, which I think we did structure here at the top. So breeds, uh, selected breed, selected breed, um, which is the other one, handle breed change, change, get dot picture. Oh, but this is going coming from this. This that handle breed. So this that get dog picture. Reset select from this that reset select. Cool. Um, and I think that my that should have rewired our app to use our outsource component, our read selector component, let's try it out. Refresh, new dog, this works. Select something here. Borsoi, that works. Bull terrier, bulldog. This, no, this is not a bulldog. So we still have the problem of one behind. I found a solution. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make the function that handles Mm. I, I see. Because he showed me that mine was uh, a polygon. Mm -hmm. um, with uh, just doing, making it an async function. Making the, the function this. that gets the change. Async. async. Even though there is no like await. You wouldn't wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, but it, we don't have an await on that function, do we? We have to put an await. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's definitely, I think, our approach to that. Let's do... Wait, so let's see. We, we currently have that same problem. So if I'm on Bulldog. If I pick Husky, we get a Bulldog. If I click... Let's click on Pitbull and we should get a Husky. Yeah. So... 
So then, going with Sergio, so where, where do I make the change? Here? Make this async. Oh, actually, yeah, it is here, it is here, sorry. In here? Oh, in here? Yes. Oh. I think that works. Let's see. We made this function asynchronous with a wait on set state. Um, let's go to Beagle. Get a Beagle immediately. Let's get to Husky. <laughs> we get a Husky. Um, yeah, so Dalmatan. Um, I don't know how to pronounce this, but this is like... Um, cool, so thank you. Um, Sergio found a solution. <laughs> so this, I'll say this is fine. This is uh, not what I had in mind. Um, the await on this that set state. I guess like my question here will be set state. If we're doing a wait on set state, then that means that then uh, set state might return a promise, um, and that sort of will connect back to being asynchronous. So let's try it out here. Like, what if we do let set state promise? I'm gonna do this. Set state promise equal this dot set state. Let's see if this. I'm gonna say await set state promise, which is basically I didn't change anything. I just save the result. I have this is something I've never done. Just see if set state returns something. See if it returns a promise um, that we can await on. And I'm just gonna do console.log set state promise. And I guess we'll find out if set state returns the promise and if we can await it. Um, let's go here, console. Clear this. Select. Uh, we get, we actually get undefined. Um, so set state doesn't return a promise. Um, and this, confusingly enough, uh, works. Um, we are awaiting <laughs> something. Yeah, I, I will need to look into it uh, deeper than this. Um, for for the, basically fully understanding why this works. Um, the way in, you know, I'm glad that we got something that works and it fixes that. Um, Let's see the way that this will, um, the article that I share should recommend. This actually may, let me go there. This must recommend um, this other approach. Mm -hmm. So this is the other way, and I think, I think this is good to do like now. So it turns out that there is two, you can pass to set, to set state, you can pass two things, not only one. Uh, initially I said you can only pass one thing, which is an object that is going to be your new state. Uh, but to set state, the second thing that you can pass to set state is a callback function. And that callback function uh, is this callback that we have here. Note that we're not passing to this set state, we're not passing uh, an object, we're passing this callback function. This callback function gets two arguments, the previous state and the current props. I haven't used current props that much. Um, but with here, this function, one rule of this function is that this function must return an object, it must return the new state, basically, or the object that will be merged into state later on. Um, and using this, then what we'll need to do, like, if we to fix this using uh, 
Oh, wait, this is pre for previous state. Yeah. Um, yeah, this just get rid get over these um, read this article fully. But here, for, to fix this problem, what we need to do here is um, to sort of compact our set state. Basically, we need it to happen uh, at once. So let's see how we can do that here. Um, so we had the hill. Okay, um, the way in which we could do this is, or we're going back to why we're getting this problem is because we we're setting the state and accessing state, um, like sort of, I like to think of it just like near each other. Here we have like this set state, um, have this set state here, and then on, on, under here we have this other, this is gonna be another set state. Um, and I think this problem, the problem might be not actually on setting the state, but because this function is reading the state and also setting it. And I think it's that reading the part that is throwing us off, like on, on here. So let's see if we go on that get doc picture. Um, instead of reading the, this from the state uh, in here, what if we take it in here as an argument? Let's try this. Right? Let's try not read it from the state, just taking it in as an argument. Um, and let's just experiment with this, see if we get anything here. Um, then in the handle read change, we'll need to pass in the read as an argument here that we're going to call just a uh, new read to use. Basically, this is the stuff that we're setting into the state, right? This this is going to be the new read is going to be our selected read. So we have it at this point. Um, why have dog read access it again from um, accessing the state again when we, we could just pass it here? So let's see if this, I have the suspicion that this might be uh, the solution to our problem here. So I'm going to get rid of the async await. Um, and let's try this out. Put it here to the side. Open this here. Refresh. Get a random dog. Let's go with boxer. Get a boxer. Go with corgi. We get a corgi. Let's go with husky. Um, we get a husky here. So then here the, the difference was the get dog picture was, and this is something that I said earlier, uh, was accessing the state without it um, being finished setting. The selected breed was not finished setting into the state when get dog picture was trying to access it already. And in this case, uh, we get it to work because basically what we did is we get rid of accessing here the state. We were accessing the state here. Uh, let's do, let's maybe put it back. We had this const selected We had this which was the we were trying to access the state very soon after we had set it. And if we are conscious that the state, uh, updating the state might happen asynchronously, um, then that the, the state might have not finished setting when we were trying to read it. Um, and in this way, we can get rid of that. Uh, that's a good question. It will, it will work, I think. Oh, wait, let's see. Uh, let's click. Blue tick, new dog. Ah, it doesn't work now. Mm -hmm. So we fixed one thing and we broke another one. <laughs> That's most likely what we do as software engineers. Um, right, so then how do we fix that? Because we have the, we had that in here, right? Our, 
Our handle breed change. Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, here, actually, uh, oh yeah, this is in the bread, uh, breed selector. We moved all the buttons to that one. Um, oh, okay, so in, yeah, I guess then I'm not thinking, of, I'm thinking about which one will be better. I think, but basically, I think await versus versus this uh, method. Um, what we could do for fix for fixing that is this. We we could do it on the Brit selector. Uh, wait, where do I have? It? Let's open the Brit selector here. What we could have here is instead of instead of just this one calling straight the get dot picture. This could also pass in an argument. That would be, maybe we could have a function here, um, const handle, handle new, new dog button, event, and here we'll do, I'll do something like, just get dog picture. Right, and then I will change the new dog with handle new dog button. So instead of calling straight the function that came from app, uh, we just wrap it here in this other function handle new dog button. And here I'll pass in the I'll pass in the selected breed. Selected breed. This will pass in the selected breed came through props. Um, and let's see if this works. As we go to the browser, fresh, try to get a new dog. Okay, this is random. Go to boxer, get a boxer, get another boxer. This get corgi, get a corgi, we get another corgi. Um, so in this way, then we fixed that issue of um, reading from the state. And here we took this function that will basically take in the selected breed as an argument rather than uh, reading it from the state. Um, and these are, yeah, these are little things that you want to be watching for about, Especially just state. Like whenever you get this again, I want you to think, oh, I'm I'm access I'm accessing the state uh, too soon after have have I'm trying to set it and maybe that hasn't finished, um, and we get this issue. Um, I do feel I don't feel I don't feel that async await is the best way to f to fix it, especially because set state doesn't return a promise, uh, and we should use that with promise-based, strictly promise-based um, approaches. And yeah, even though it fixes it, um, and I can't really like, yeah, I don't have an, a better argument that that for not using async await on set state uh, than just the fact that it's not, the set state doesn't return to you a promise uh, in which you can await uh, for. And yeah, just doesn't doesn't feel doesn't feel right. Questions or comments about taking this out to a separate component um, and having it handle it from there. One thing that that here we if we think about um, if we think about if breed selector should have state. Or if we if we should move anything anything else to breed selector, from here I'll say we have I know, so we have the URL and the selected breed in our app state uh, because we need to make that network request to display an image here in our app component now. When we think of uh, the list of breeds, nowhere else in our app we need the list of breeds other than the select. So the select is the only one that needs to have access to the breeds, um, the array of breeds, basically. 
So in this case, like when you want to have, you want to, in this case, we're sort of like not, we, we're not lifting this thing up, but we just, you just want to think about how information is used and needed in your application. If you see that information is needed only in one component, then just have that component, uh, have that information local to that component. For instance, in, in this case, what I'm saying is this breeze array doesn't need to live in app because there is no other component uh, that needs it. Only the select, only the breed selector needs the list of breeds, right? So we could take, we could sort of like take that state down from app the breeds to just be local to the breed selector. And the opposite is when you have information, the problems that we were having last week, where you want to share information among components. In that case, we we do the opposite. We lift the state up to a common ancestor that then can share the information to the two or three children that need it. In this case, the breed, in this case, like the example is, let's say the URL. Um, let's do, actually, let's do this second component that I said. And here I'll be um, contradicting myself on what I told Hubo earlier, which is you shouldn't have a component that is just for one element. Um, but I'm literally going to take this image um, and I'm going to create a new component. I took that with command X to cut it. Uh, let me open here the side. And I'm going to create a new component that I'm going to call dog display. Or let's just call it dog. .jsx. And this component is going to do, let's do import react from react const dog functional we're gonna need some props return just our image and this URL is gonna come from props so props props.url and let's do export export default Dog. I'm going to put this here to the side. And then here I'm going to use my dog component. Also, like this um, VS Code has a nice feature that when you try to use something that is that it detects that you haven't imported, some things it will import it from you. So if I click on this one here or you have I hit enter, uh, VS Code is smart enough to figure out where that will come from and it wrote the import statement for me. So if I go all the way up, we see that VS Code wrote this import statement for me. Uh, the import doc from components doc. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't. I haven't like been able to tell when it does and when it doesn't. Um, so just make sure that you have the import doc at the top. And here we have this and we said that this we need to pass in the URL as props as we see that this ex component here is expecting props that URL so let's say URL is the URL that comes from state right now if we go back to our website our app just works exactly in the same way We just outsource basically our dog. Um, and I did this because tomorrow what we're gonna do is our dog, uh, we're gonna have a dog list instead of just a single dog. Um, and we're gonna re reuse in this component. Um, cool, but now, now here is we have, So we basically have two components, uh, or three. We have app, breed selector, uh, and dog. Remember that components that have many children like this one uh, are sometimes referred to as container components. Um, container components are components that usually have state, most of, most of the times have state, and they render children. Um, and they're oftentimes fetch information for their children 
and just pass it down as props. Um, just sort of you have that as a frame of reference. Sometimes it's called uh, they're, they're called container components, basically. Um, cool. So in here we see that, for instance, the URL for us to the URL is a piece of information that is needed in is needed in the dog, right? But it happens. The URL is needed in the dog, but it happens as a consequence, or we get a URL as a consequence of interacting with the select box. Right? When we click, when we click the button that is in the select box, um, when we select a new breed, that is affecting the URL. So we sort of need the communication between this component and the dog component, right? Because we need to share information between um, because we can think of because we need to share information between sibling components, then the best place for keeping track of the URL is app, because app can uh, manage that URL, manage it and pass it to its children. So we can have just like the URL local to this component, to this component state, or we can have the URL local to the dot component state. We'll need an app. Uh, same thing for, what's the other thing that we have in state? Um, the selected breed, like I guess, like all these are in your interacting. Now, the selected breed could it be right? I guess so. Selected breed at this point, we're gonna see that this is gonna change tomorrow, but at this point, selected breed is information that we don't need in dog, right? We don't need the we don't need to have the selected breeding dog. Um, we just need a URL for dog. So selected breed is something that can live here. Doesn't need to live in app. Uh, something that can live just in the uh, breed selector. So all I'm saying is whenever you're, like your, your applications will have information and you're gonna have to think about where you need your information. And if you think about that, then you will start to see, oh, I need to share this piece of information with these three components. Um, how do I do that? Then I'll need to keep that information in some kind of ancestor, most of the time just the parent. Um, and then you will realize, oh, I don't need this information here. That can be local to its own component. So in here, what I'm saying is, not only let's break out the, the, um, the components on, um, breed selector and dog, but also let's break down the state um, and let's think about what information is needed where uh, and if we need to share it. So for that case then we realize that we don't need the breeds in app because breeds, the, comp the array of breeds is not going to be shared among any components. There's only one component that needs it and it's the breed selector to display a list of options. Same thing with the selected breed. Um, so actually, let's do. So let's move. Let's move the breeds to our breed selector. The way in which we can do that is right. And then here, once we want to move this state to our breed selector, then we realize that our breed selector initially we wrote it as a functional component, but now it will need state. And we want to keep. Uh, the breeds uh, array in its state. So we need to convert this to a class uh, extends uh, this structure here react uh, or this structure component extends component props all the stuff that we had before, now we'll need to go in, in the, uh, the render function. Um, render, let's close the render down here. And we, oh, for instance, this function now can go on the handle new button function, can go on the class itself. So let's do it here with just this handle 
new dark button. And let's adjust that here with this, the handle new dark button. Uh, also, so the, so the reset select will come down as well. Uh, let's see, I, I'm seeing that we have an error. Oh, this arrow doesn't go there. Cool. So I just changed the, co the functional component to a class component and everything should be working exactly the same. Oh, uh, now this um, the prop will come from this. So let's make sure that I fix that everywhere. Yeah, I think that's... Um, we're no longer using get dot picture, or at least not in the render. And as I did that, let's look at our code. We get get dot picture is not defined, and selected print is not defined. Got it. So this is um, these two functions: the get dot picture, now the get dot picture, and the argument selected print. We need to get those from props. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to do this. Dot props dot get and here. Uh, I guess it's also just better to destructure. So let's do it here. Const get dot picture selected breed. This com in props. And let's see. Everything is working as we need it to work. Cool. So we transform our functional component to a class component because we are now now going to keep track of our state um, in it. Only the state that relates to the selector. So let's create a state here with constructor. Also here, whenever, whenever you have like children component, if you need the props on the constructor for whatever reason, you can receive them here. This will receive here the props. So you might have seen these in like tutorials online or documentation. Um, I think I, we don't, we generally don't use it in app. It's just because we know that app is not the child of any component. So there is no props, we are sure that there is no props being passed to um, to the component, to app, basically. So let's do the state here, this that state. And we're gonna basically move this. Move the breeds and move the selected breed. In fact, I'm gonna get rid of this in app. Now we know that uh, the we want to keep the breeds on uh, just on the breed selector, so we can and we need to get the breeds on when the selector mounts. So we're gonna need to do console uh, component did mount here and when the component mounts what I want to do is basically get the dog breeds let's get that from there this dot get dog breeds so then that means that then we need to bring in also get dog breeds this function will come to our breed selector here get dog breeds now is part of our breed selector handle breed change is going to be part of our breed selector uh, let me just cut this from here oh let me get this back to just the set state that we had like
populate select. Uh, and then reset select will also live in our bridge selector. At this point, I'm thinking that it would have been just easier to rename app. Um, let's see this, this. We know that what stuff that will stay in app is get dot picture. Um, we're gonna get a dot picture when the app mounts. Let's get rid of this. Uh, we have the state just for the URL. And let's see what else, render in here, we have the bridge selector. Now we know that we were passing this through props. Um, as we realized that, pro that the breeds array was only needed in the bridge selector, nowhere else, uh, then we no longer have it in, in app, we no longer will pass it. Selected breed now lives in the bridge selector. Uh, handle breed change now lives in the bridge selector as well, it's, it's internally. Get dot picture. Get dot picture is a function that we will need to pass from app, so that whenever you change the select or whenever you click the button to get a new picture, uh, you can call. So we will need that. Reset select um, will leave it itself in the bridge selector, and we end up with this. And then get this in here. Now more easily we can, oh, I think this BR was there for sort of some separation, but basically we now have this the app has two children that we can see clearly where they are, the bridge selector and the dog. Um, and they are basically with these two. This is the bridge selector, uh, this is the dog. And this is then, you'll find yourself doing this uh, often, just sort of refactoring your app as it grows, as uh, you start to make sense of to where the state should be, what parts of state should be where, uh, and so on. And let's just re, let's see what the app is probably breaking. Axios is not defined. So now we will need to do Axios in here. Import Axios from Axios. Uh, let's see what other stuff is breaking. <coughs> Cannot reproperty map of undefined. This was very likely because we were uh, accessing breeds from props, but now they're no longer coming from props, they're coming from the state. Um, so basically this part here, selected breed will come from selected breed comes from state, and the breeds also come from state. So let's do this here, const. Breeds, selected breed. These both come from state, so let's do this dot state. Let's remove them from here. What comes in props? In props, we're only going to have uh, the stuff that we pass in here, which was, wait, this is, let me close this here. Just the get doc picture, that's the only thing that we get in props. So I guess for that one, they just not even have this. Uh, let's just bring this stuff from the state. Um, Handle bridge change is going to come from the state, from the class. So this is coming from this. Handle bridge change. Selector bridge comes from the state. Breeds come from the state. On click is going to come from uh, the class itself. The reset is going to come from the class itself. So this is going to be this. Um, then let's see what else do I have. Let's see if we have everything working again. Uh, it broke this that get doc picture is not a function. Uh, if you remember, anyone has any idea why this error is getting thrown? This that get doc picture is not a function. Uh, and it's saying bridge selector 
line 23. So let's go to Brit selector line 23. This line. Oops. Get dark picture. This is the line that is throwing the error. In here. That's a good question. Michael is asking, where is the function defined? Remember that this function is the one that um, gets a random, uh, that will get a dog picture by the breed. And this function is not defined in our breed selector. Right? Our breed selector is just in charge of managing the select and the buttons. Uh, this function is defined in app. In here, get dark picture. Right. And we define this function in app, or it ended up in app, uh, because we know that this function will be the one in charge of fetching a URL for a dog image. And we know that there are multiple factors that um, will affect that URL, or this function, the get, the get dog picture. There is the first factor is if we don't have anything selected on the select box, we want to use we want to get a random dog. So the URL to get a random dog is this one. But if there is something selected, meaning something is changed, something is different here in the base selector, we need to call um, the that URL will be different, right? So we sort of have this uh, problem where the URL is an information is information that we want to we need to share between these two components uh, in a, in a sense and that is what makes URL stay in app the fact that um, these these two components either need it or depend on it to work the dog depends on the URL for rendering the image literally to show the image and the print selector doesn't depend on the URL, but it affects the URL. If you have a breed selected, uh, it will affect the URL. Uh, but then, yes, we realize that this function um, lives in app. Um, so we're gonna we're passing it, but we need to call this function whenever the user selects something in the selector. So we need to make sure that we pass it here as props, which is what we're doing here. Breed selector get dot picture this dot get dot picture. So in here, uh, in our <coughs> popular select, the handle new dog button. What we want to do here is this will come from props. Um, somebody already fixed it for me. This comes from props. This was who was this? Can't see who it was, but anyway, um, this function, the get doc picture, will come through props. We can see it being passed here on app. Brit selector get doc picture, and we just need to call that function, the one that came through props with the selected breed. Um, selected breed will not come from props. Selected breed comes. It will come from, oh, it will come from the state. Oh man, I hopefully this doesn't get us back to square one, where, which is const. Um, selected breed comes from state. This structure dot from the state. Let's see. Uh, oh, this is weird. To African, uh, we have hand breed selector, handle breed change. This I get dot picture is not a function. Wait, what line? Line 23, breed selector. Right here. Here, this will also come from props, so let's do this. That this is basically the same function that we were talking about earlier. 
Let's just see that everything works. Kita, boxer, new boxer, new boxer. And still works exactly the same. Chihuahua. Cool. So any questions about how we did all this? We separated our app. Um, into two components, major two components. Tomorrow we're going to be building on the dog to get not only just a single dog, but maybe a list of dogs. Um, and that will that'll make it more... Have, wait, this dog display, I never use this dog display. Let's see, let me remove that. I called it just dog. Um, so far our dog is just like this component which is literally just an image tag. Generally, you, won't, you don't want to have a component just for a tag. Um, but in this case, um, just so that we know that this is going to grow tomorrow a little bit more. Um, cool. Any final questions, comments, um, final doubts about what we did today? How do we, in general, just make network requests? Um, Say that again? We have to the selector? Uh, do you mean the breed selector? No, the drop down list. Um, so we have the breeds here in the state of breed selector, and then we have the select box. No, I meant those are rules, but the JS on the left. Oh, this, oh, um, yeah, this was uh, the selector that Michael implemented. Um, this, I think, is here. Yeah, you could ignore that, but it, uh, it is basically, it's very similar to the one I have, breed selector. Yeah. Um, that one has a, a nice trick about showing uh, sub-breeds, uh, if you want to check that out. Also, just sort of we, uh, to reinforce the concept of the network request, um, we, there are some points like, we know why we want, or I hope it's now more natural for you to think why we want to get a dot picture on component did mount, right? But you also think, could we have, could we call this dot get dot picture on the constructor since we know that that's gonna happen first and would it still work? Um, what do you think? Would it still work if we, instead of component did mount, um, we have get doc picture here. We invoke this dot get doc picture um, in the constructor. What are some maybe points against or points um, pro this approach? Nice. Right, so so Janesh is pointing to the timing. Like we don't know how long it's gonna take this network request to succeed, um, and also we don't know if we don't know how how soon our app will load. Our app in a small in a in an older computer will take longer to load, um, and we don't know if the loading the DOM, loading our page, might take longer than loading the network request, or the opposite might also be true. Um, Let's just try it out and see if, see what happens. If we call it here. In this case, um, it works. And in this case, it works is because our the network request is taking longer than my page to load. So this remember that this is an asynchronous. So the constructor is the first thing that gets called. Let me just make sure that we don't have anywhere else this function is to get dot picture. Yeah, we're not calling this function uh, anywhere else on, on app. We just call it on the bridge selector. 
do we have on the bridge selector it just make me let me make sure that on the bridge selector we don't have a component did mount getting the picture common yeah get dog please we get the dog but not the dog picture in this case this very confusingly uh, maybe at first it works is because the network request is taking longer than my page to load uh, that might not always be true as we have a bigger app um, the app might be take the DOM entirely may take longer than the network request to load and then my app wouldn't work um, but generally when you want to have to stuff to when you want stuff to happen when your component mounts that's what component did mount is for um, oh in fact I think this will break if I do this maybe let's try move this up from the state maybe maybe not let's see uh, no, it doesn't break yeah, it's still because this is taking, um, this is asynchronous. Oh, I guess something interesting will be then, yeah, uh, then what happens if we await this? Then we have to make the constructor async uh, and it just doesn't look good. So you wanna make sure that you uh, are not making network requests in your constructor. Uh, because they may or may not work. Component amount ensures that the network request will be made after the component mounts um, that you have state that you have your component displaying. Um, now why don't we want to do what is the next thing that happens after after the constructor? What's the next thing that happens after the constructor on the first on the first try on the first time we run our app you need to start asking questions I was um, I was thinking about this recently about how oh I think it was that article that I share I share an article on on slack about your like phone, how to ace your phone screening or your phone interview. And one of the points there was having questions for the end. And that worries me. Like if you're not asking questions here, how are you gonna ask questions on the interview or in, just in general? Uh, when, you, when you finish something, like asking questions is that um, demonstration that you are invested in like the opportunity, uh, and especially like when you're talking to recruiters and just people related to the companies uh, in general. So you always want to have like a question, and then, and you like it's it's, all, it's something very really interesting that I think about how you may have the question you just uh, something prevents you from from saying it. It might be just I haven't figured out what that factor is yet. I think it's probably just a combination. Um, but yeah, make sure you are asking your questions. Yep. No, my no worries. If you was to explain how this app works from beginning to end, uh -huh. how would you be able to do that? Sure. Um, yeah, that's something that you will that you could get asked in an interview. Like, tell me, how, like, I don't, I don't care about the details. Maybe the interviewer doesn't even know React, um, but you want to be able to explain how this app works. Um, that's a good question. I will say that this, the way this app works is. Like sort of like in that scenario, let's say I'm on the phone with somebody and somebody is asking me how this app works. Um, I'll go something about like, oh, this app was built in React. I don't know how familiar you are with React, uh, but React is a JavaScript framework that allows to build front-end applications, UI applications. And what is cool about React is that it allows me to think of my app in components, in different terms. And for this app specifically, I have three components. Um, I have one main component that like um, manages manages state and is in charge of the other two components. That component I call app. Um, then I have two other components: a bridge selector and a, and a dog component. For bridge selector, we have it's a component that just is in charge of rendering a select box, handling a couple buttons to get a new photo, and to reset the selector. Dog is a component that is uh, in React lingo just known as a, 
presentational component um, that is just in charge of displaying information. Doc just displays information. And how it works um, is breed selectors I can put it that will let me select a breed from it. Or actually, I guess I should maybe back, backtrack from there. Um, components have um, lifecycle methods. And what that means is that at some point in that I can tap into different stages of the component. And I want, by app, I wanted to, uh, as soon as the app loads, I wanted to display a random dog image. For that app, my component uh, is making a network request as soon as the app component mounts. So as soon as something is displayed to the user. Uh, that's making a network request to the dog API, the dog, um, dog CEO, I think, API. Uh, that will get me a random picture. So that's sort of like the first thing that the that we see. After that, then the the user will see the select box where they can pick uh, from a drop down uh, of breeds that I also get from uh, this API. And from that from that drop down, I want it so that when the user uh, picks a breed, I want it to load a new image from the API. Uh, at random, that is a dog for for that selected breed, um, and I will like generally I will say that's it. Like, or maybe as I get that new image from as the user picks a select, I make the network request to the API to get that image. Uh, I save the image to in what React is called state, and then from state I can just pass that to my other components and my dog component can display that information. And that will be like, in general, like depending on what the technical level of the conversation is, um, that will be basically how I would explain this, uh, sort of at a medium level without having to go into like setting state, event listeners. Uh, if it's somebody that knows React, they may ask you, or like, or something nice that you will wanna say maybe after is, let me know if you want me to go deeper and then and then it does, that means that probably, if they say yes, they know React uh, and they want you to go deeper. Um, so, on. so that's sort of how I would explain how this app works. And you can see that it's, I didn't go into like much details uh, on, on how it works. Um, other questions? Like, that's correct. Component in mount is a built in function. Um, all class components have it. Only class components, though. Function components don't have lifecycle methods, um, and it is built in. Like, we never have to call, and you know that it's built in because we never have to call it ourselves. React calls it for us when a component is about to mount, uh, when a component finishes mounting. Yeah. Other questions? Just come up with one question. Uh -huh. um, in this case, we won't see component will unmount. Um, and if we think back as to like the main use, um, or one of the main uses for component and mount is to do like plain up work. Uh, in this case, we are mounting, we, like the bridge selector and the dog are being mounted, but they're never being unmounted. Um, so we, there's no room for us, uh, or not, not there's, there's no room, there is no need for component uh, well mount at this point. Once we see, once we see React uh, router, how to have like multiple routes in our React, then component did mount comes uh, a little bit more handy there. Um, yeah. Let me see what else was the. Oh, why why don't we want to do? Oh, so I was asking, like, we know that uh, the life cycle is the constructor gets called first, then if we have component did, um, then after the constructor gets called, render gets called, and then after render gets called, the first render, component in mount gets called, right? What would happen if we call um, get dog picture in the render? What do we call it like here?
what's going on. An infinite loop. You just got in an infinite loop. Why is where why what is the explanation uh, for this infinite loop? Pupil? Every time you set the state, a render gets called. Render calls the function that sets the state, uh, which then calls render again, and so on and so forth. And right now we're just hitting this API. Uh, it's interesting that it's not faster than this, but um, yeah, so you want to think about when you call your function. Uh, for this case, component in mount, we went, in fact, we're calling this function in two places. One is when the component mounts, and the second is when you click this button to get a new run. Um, uh, let me see what else. Yep. It all happens so very fast. I still don't quite understand why mm -hmm. um, we separated our states into two pumps. Yeah. Um, give me one sec. Uh, we did that because, let me go back here. We did that because um, we realized that what one is sort of foreseeing that our app is going to grow tomorrow a little bit more, um, and our dog component more specifically. But we also realized that um, the breeds array was something that we wouldn't need, uh, we only need in one place, which is in the read selector. So let's say, so what we did was, this is what um, a principle, like oftentimes talked about, of separation of concerns. Uh, what we did is we separated getting, we separated, we separated the getting of the breeds and displaying of the breeds responsibility to the breed selector. Basically. Um, and just in general, to have our app a little bit more modular. Let's say, like, and this, I know that this is, this is always a hard point, especially because we generally, for demonstrations, make smaller apps. Um, but let's say we wanted to have our Brit selector somewhere else in our application, in another screen, in another page. Um, that will allow us to just import this component, and it just works. We get a list of breeds, you know. Like in fact, like if I if I want more breeds, if I need more breeds somewhere else, more breed selectors, I can just literally copy this, um, and now we have like three that will work exactly the same. All right. Um, but just imagine these are needed like somewhere else. So they. The general idea for for separating stuff into components is reusability, and I will say a secondary, like or not secondary, but like also important, will be just organization and having, yeah, sort of distributing responsibilities. At some point, I was just doing too many things, yeah. um, and we realized that some of that work that I was doing could uh, could be offloaded to. The, bre the, the breed list, basically. The breed selector. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, get rid of this. Cool. Um, so I think that is it for today. Um, I'll, I'll stay here till like seven if you have any questions or if you need any help with anything. Um, I also wanna do, I wanna try to start like staying an hour after for anyone that might have questions or need help. Um, and so I'm trying to figure that out uh, as well as maybe at least during the week be available some hours before 
um, for same thing, just questions and general general help. So I'll I'll let you know probably on a Slack message um, what the plan for that is. Uh, that is it for today. Please fill out the SC ticket. Um, And we're done for today. So I realized the last question in the exit ticket talks about something that we're going to talk about tomorrow. Um, so you know what, Let's, don't do the exit ticket today, we'll do it tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Just don't submit it. Yeah. Cool, make sure that, oh, also just the final announcement is the calculator project is due tomorrow, uh, tomorrow at midnight, so make sure that, you know, if you are still working on it, take this time, use it wisely. Uh, work on it. Um, you know that uh, we're probably going to be staying until 6, just as usual. So make sure to reach out for help. <laughs> Say that again? Uh, the calculator project? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it will be it will be tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. Yeah.